Bibles, turn with me to the book of Hebrews. <coughs> Hebrews chapter 9, verse number 14. It says, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serving, to serve the living God. I'm going to read it to you one more time, so maybe it'll sink in. It says, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, I thank you for the reading of thy word. Lord, and I pray that you'll anoint your servant, Lord, give him words of wisdom, words of knowledge, and let him say something to touch some heart. And when they leave out of here, they'll say it's been good to be in your house. And all of God's children said, Amen. You may be seated. What I read to you a while ago <coughs> was talking about a spiritual cleansing. That's what that verse of scripture was consistent of. <coughs> but I want to talk to you this morning on the word regeneration. And every one of us need to be regenerated. David, the apostle Paul said that he crucified himself daily. That's the same thing as being regenerated. That's when you ask the Lord to take uh, care of any sin in your life and remove that sin to where you can be the person that you need to be. And, you know, every day we need to be that way. We need to ask the Lord, Lord, if I've done anything wrong, I pray for forgiveness right now for it, because I want to do what's right. Do you want to do what's right? Amen. You don't want one little thing, one little spot, one little blemish to keep you out of heaven. <coughs> so we need every day to crucify ourselves daily. We need to ask the Lord to take charge of our life and to do what is right for us. And listen to me. In the book of Ezekiel, you know, Israel was God's chosen people. We we all understand that there. And, and God restored Israel. But I want to tell you what a uh, verse of scripture, what Ezekiel said when uh, as the Lord gave them a new spirit, he said to them, he said, a new heart also will I give you and a new spirit. I will put within you, and I will take away that stony heart you know, out of you and uh, out of your flesh, and I will give you a new heart of flesh. That's what the Lord can do for you and I this morning. He can take that old stony heart that we have, that old, uh, all that sin that's in that heart, he can remove it. You'll be regenerated. But, you know, a moral person is a good person. But that don't get you to heaven, church. Amen. That don't get you to heaven. You've got to do according to God's word. You've got to, to stand on the promises that God has given to us. You know, we serve a God uh, uh, that's uh, 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 the greatest that, that ever was. You know, back in, in the Old Testament, and it's, it's not just in the Old, it's in the New, uh, the new World that we live in today. The Bible says, Thou shalt have no other gods before you. And you know what? They have all kind of gods in the Old Testament, but they still have gods here, right here in this here world that we're going to. People worship the wrong kind of God. Listen, here, there's only one way to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ, and that's the God we need Amen. to serve. We need to stand on, the, on His Word. We don't need to worry about all these things that's going out in this world as, as people doing all kinds of wrong things. But if you put Jesus first in your life, you will make a 
difference uh, in yourself. Because if you don't put him first in your life, I'm telling you, everything that you do is going to fall. You, yeah. you know what? You can have a million dollars in the bank. And you take that, and if you don't live for Jesus, and if you don't give Jesus what belongs in, you're going to fail with it. Mean, you might, when you die, there still might be a million dollars in there, but you're going to die broke in heart. You're going to die without Jesus. You're going to die, uh, and you're going to go straight to the devil's hell if you don't put him first in your life. Jesus is the only way. He is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can get to heaven except through him. And that's what I want to do. Do you want to go to heaven this morning? I do. I want to go and live with Jesus. John said this right here, and, I, and, and listen to what I'm telling you. He said, which were born of the blood, he says, nor will the flesh or nor of the will of man. It, it don't matter. You can all be born of man. And that's that moral part. But the only way you will go to heaven is through God. That's the only way. Through God. And, and how do you say, well, how did I get that through God? Because he sent his only begotten son in this here world to go to the cross of Calvary to where we can have life and have it more abundantly. Yeah. Do you love him as a as it just me? I love him. Yeah. I wouldn't trade him for nothing in this here world. He is my keeper. He is everything to me. And I look over this congregation out here. Oh, and I can see on your faces. I see, oh, I can see some people that's got the smiles on their faces, and I can see the people that's, that's in a little bit of awe. Oh. But I'm telling you what, Jesus can get rid of that awe, oh, and he can make you happy and put a smile on your face. I don't know why the Lord asked me to sing that song that I sang a while ago, because it's right in my text. And we know, we know who that man Nicodemus was. We know he was a rich man. The Bible tells us that he was a ruler. And after studying, I found out that he was the third richest man in Jerusalem. And he, he met Jesus one day and he said to Jesus, he said, I know you've got to be of God. He said, for you to do all these things that you do, perform all these miracles. And Jesus looks at him, and he says to him, he says, except ye be born again, you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. And listen, you can be a good man. You can, you can treat your neighbor good. You can do, but I'm telling you, it's in black and white. If you don't repent, you cannot make it in heaven. You've got to ask the Lord to come into your life. You've got to ask him to, to change all the bad things that you used to do. You don't have to do them things no more. You know, what we've done is, is behind us. I, I've come too far to look back. There's nothing behind me. I'm pressing on towards the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And I want to go to see him one day. I thought about all these other things. Hey, I have a heritage, y'all. I have a heritage. God. King Jesus, Amen. give me something. Oh, that I'm proud of. I'm proud that I was taught right from wrong. I'm proud to know that, you know, that God sent his son to, to this hill, earth. To go to that old rugged tree for me to where I could have life and have it more abundantly. And I didn't say that I was going to be perfect. I'm going to make errors. I'm going to make mistakes. Amen. But oh, I got an advocate with Jesus Christ. He'll go to the Father for me in my behalf. He is my Savior. And I just Amen. thank Him for it this morning. Amen. And I wouldn't trade Him for nothing in this here world. When I got regenerated, I, I had a new creation to come into me. Oh, and the Apostle Paul, and you know, I think about him, how, how he killed Christians, he was a persecutor of the church, uh, and uh, oh, but listen, when God turned him around, 
He made a different person. There was no more old Saul, and he become Paul, and he become a, a great man in the kingdom of God. And you know, he said in his word, he said, old things have passed away, and all things have become new. And when that happens to you, church, that means that you don't go back and you don't run around with them. The women or the men that you used to run around with, you don't do them their things. You don't fornicate. You don't commit adultery. But you stand on the word of God and live according to his word. God is still alive and God is still uh, doing well. And he's the one that's in control. And when we realize that, man, we're going to see these uh, viruses and things move around in this community and get right again and get us back in the, to the order that we're supposed to be in. Paul also said these words here when he was talking to his brother Titus. You know, church, regeneration, that's a long word, but it's a simple word. It's to be, this, this here's what is necessary to have salvation. Not by the works of righteousness. See, we can't earn this here. Salvation is a free gift from Jesus Christ. It's, it's given to us. And he says, uh, but according to his mercy, he saved us. That's what we got saved by, his mercy. By the washing and the regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. That's where it all come from. You know, I heard a preacher say this morning, and I don't know who it was, but he said this here. He said so many people, so many, many people have this here Bible in their home, but they never open it. But if you want to have that close relationship with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You got to read his word. Amen. You got to pray. You have your devotion, whether it's in the morning, the night, how 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 your devotion is, however you want to do it. But you've got to put him first in your life. And you say, well, I put God first in my life. Yeah, but you you do all wicked things and you that you always done. So how how are you telling me that you put him first in your life? I've seen born again Christians that the devil will send somebody to and, and say something to them and oh you wouldn't you wouldn't think they were a Christian. Hear the stuff that they say to them. Listen to me. We gonna give an account for every word that we say. You hear me? Every idle word we say, we're gonna give an account for. So if you stay prayed up and read up, I promise you, you have things to fight the enemy off because I'm telling you, the enemy will come and, and he will try to kill, steal, and destroy. But I'm telling you, you've got something to fight him off. If you've got the blood of Jesus flowing in your veins, I'm telling you, he can't cross that bloodline unless you elect to let him do it. And that's what we've got to understand. I don't have but two more things that I want to say to you, and I'm going to try to say them quick. One of them is what the Apostle Paul, uh, Apostle Peter said about the Word of God. He says, being born again. Now here this church, this here affects us all. We're not born again of a corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the Word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. This word will never change. You might change. I might change. Your neighbors might change. But the word of God will stand firm forever and forever. Amen. And I got one more thing and I want and I'm going to try to close it out right here. And I want to I want to read this verse of scripture to you. It's found in 1 John 5 and 1. Because I want you to understand this here. And and if you just listen to these here words, it ought to change your whole life about the way you feel about Jesus Christ. 
It says, whosoever. And who's, who are we talking about? We're talking about all of us. Whosoever. The whole wide world. It says, believe it that Jesus is the Christ. What is it? He's born of God. Or she. They're born of God. There's no ifs, no ands, no what, no buts about it. If you believe that Jesus Christ is, is uh, the Son of God and that everyone that loveth him that begot, love him also that he is begotten of him. In other words, what I'm trying to say to you, church, if you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you're born of God. You believe in His Word. That means that you're going to live according to His Word. If you don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God, you're headed for a devil's hell. Amen. Just as plain and simple as I know how to tell you. You're going to die and go to a devil's hell. But when you do like John 3 and 3 said, when he talked to Nicodemus and told him that he must be born, that's what it takes. Romans 5 and 9. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. Thou shalt be regenerated, saved, whatever, cleansed. That shall be made different. You won't be the same person. You know, you can come down to this altar and kneel and, and ask the good Lord to come into your life and take away all the sin. And then you get back home the next week or the week after next and the old enemy comes in to attack you because you're not feeding the soul. You won't never be happy again. You'll be in misery no matter what. But listen, once Jesus makes a transformation in that old stony heart that you had and makes it a pure heart. You won't never be the same. I'm not saying you're going to be perfect. I'm not saying you're going to do everything right. But we ought to put Jesus first in our life. Let us pray. Eternal God, I hear from the Father. I love you, Lord. I love everybody here in this congregation here this morning, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you touch every heart. Open up your hearts, open up your eyes and open up your mind and let them realize there's only one way to heaven, no matter what how, what you think or what how they believe. The only way to heaven is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God says the only way to heaven is through Jesus. And we want to make sure that every one of us make it. And Lord, while I pause for a minute, I'd like to ask, is there one in here say, Preacher, pray for me, because if I die, I don't think I'm going to heaven. 